Welcome back to my animal education series. Today at the Brookfield Zoo with Glenn. Hello. How are you doing, Cole? I'm doing good. And what do we have here? We have a Blanding's turtle. And I love turtles, so I'm, I was super looking forward to this interview. And this isn't a turtle that you hear about a whole lot. No, they're, um, they're uh, actually endangered, and their populations have never been that large, probably for the last hundred years and stuff. Um, this is a relatively young turtle. She's about five years old and stuff, so she's not even close to being full grown. How long do these turtles usually live for? Uh, most aquatic turtles like this can live anywhere from 50 to 70 years. And when I was doing some of my research, some people even said like 80 to 90 years. Right, and, uh, which is crazy. In managed animal. care, um, they can live a very long time. And another thing I saw is uh, super unique about these turtles is that they don't show a lot of age. Which oh, yeah, I thought was become, super interesting. When they become adults, they pretty much look the same except they get larger. Their shell will get a little bit more of a dome to it and stuff. Um, and they're actually very beautiful. They have a very long neck that would probably come out about that far, and it's black with a very yellow throat. So how does this coloration help them in the wild? Well, if you look at it, there's two different kinds of colors here. So from above, and if something's above it trying to look for it, or if it's sitting in the water and there's a raccoon or a, a, a coyote or something, it's not going to be easy to see and stuff. And then from underneath, it's the same thing, especially with the little ones. They're going to blend in with the sky. If, you know, if you're a little turtle that big, wants to watch out for fish and um, all kinds of other animals that may want to have it for lunch. So what do these turtles eat in the wild? Um, their omnivores are very opportunist, so they will eat some plants. Um, they'll eat tadpoles, crayfish, small fish. Um, if there's a dead fish or something, they'll also be not above going ahead and having that for lunch. So pretty similar to most aquatic turtles. Yeah, absolutely, yes. And what would try to eat them? You mentioned raccoons. Right, um, probably the biggest thing eating them is the nest being disturbed by raccoons. Raccoons do get into turtle nests quite a bit. And then when they're small, again, they come out about the size of a quarter. So when they get in the water, there are large fish or other animals or large turtles uh, that may attack them as well. So what is the range for these turtles? Like where are they found? Um, they're in the Midwest, so you'll see them in uh, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Wisconsin. Um, so there's a large area there, um, Ohio, outside the state a little bit. And there's also some populations on the East Coast and in Nova Scotia. Wow, that's a really like, big range. Right, and some of those populations are not continuous. There's large no. uh, breaks in between them, which is actually an issue with this turtle because you get these segmented populations that although they may be fairly large themselves, they're separated from the other ones, and there's a genetic component that could be negatively impacted because of that. Like, has it been confirmed that they're different subspecies, or is it the same species but just genetically different? Um, that has not been, they're all the same species, but it's right. not been confirmed whether they, they were a continuous population at what time or not. That's super interesting. So how do, do their uh, legs help them in the wild? Because I, I saw when you, the claws when you picked them up. Yeah, so they, um, they, you know, they can use the claws for, you know, the females will use the back ones for digging a nest. Um, if they're eating something, it helps them pull it apart. Um, they're actually really good swimmers, too, so they have enough webbing in their feet so they're able to swim when they're in the water. And is this turtle a male or a female? This is a female. And how do you tell that? Um, she doesn't have a real concave shell, and she has a smaller tail. So what we're doing here, and we're working in cooperation with all of the surrounding states, is we're doing a recovery program. In a Brookfield Zoo, we have a soft-released enclosure, which is where they go into something. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a large, uh, it sits in the water, and fish can come up and look at them, but they're protected. So they learn that there's predators out there. They learn to live like a wild turtle. When they get larger, um, they go into the recovery program. We have uh, breeding facilities here at Brookfield Zoo. Other places have them too. Um, so they learn to live, again, the adults like wild turtles. They dig their nests, um, but we're able to protect them so that we can get as many of them to grow up as possible. Have you released any of the turtles yet? Um, one of our partners in DuPage County has started to release, yes. And how many have you released? Um, I'm thinking there are around 100 right now, but we're, they kind of keep quiet about a lot of that because they want to make sure collectors are not following them and they're letting them go and stuff so they can be let go and, um, and not be disturbed. Mm -hmm. The last thing we need is an endangered species being put out and then having someone catch it and then put it back in a tank at home. Exactly. And the other thing that happens with actually all species of turtle is in the summer, early summer, um, when they're getting ready to nest, they uh, leave the water and sometimes they cross roads and they do get hit by cars. So that's another thing that you know, if you see a turtle on the road, you know, give it the right of way and stuff. And if you're going to move a turtle, move it in the direction it was going, because if you put it back where it came from, it's going to go right back to where, where it wanted to go. I remember when I lived back in Virginia, there was a large box turtle population where we used to live. So we always told all of our neighbors and friends who came by to always move the turtle in the direction they're facing. So we would get calls all the time like, oh, I found 
a box turn on like the highway across the street uh, at, on this road, we would kind of keep a small map of like all the local streets where turtles are crossing. Sure, sure. And that's super cool that we got all these other people to collectively move turtles and, and spread the right message. That's the type of grassroots efforts that really helps too when people are looking up, whether it's a turtle or whatever animal it may be that people get involved in. And then you know, if you look at um, animal recovery programs, a lot of them are, you'll people think about Africa or South America stuff, but this is something local in the Chicago metro area that people can get involved in the support and stuff. And even as a little effort is just moving them across the street, exactly, you just reduced their chances of being hit by a car right. and then them never reproducing. Yeah, she can, now she can go lay her eggs and stuff. Mm -hmm. in her and especially with such a long lifespan, they could probably reproduce several mm -hmm. times. Yes. And if they get hit by a car, that chance is zero. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I've moved my share of uh, turtles, including big snapping turtles, off the road and stuff. So, what's one of your favorite things about these turtles? Um, in general, you know, like I'll go back a ways too. When I was a very young man, I held my cousin's pet turtle and looked at it, and it was pulled in. It was a painted turtle, and I was just amazed that how this animal is able to just pull in. It's completely protected it and stuff. Um, and I have been a turtle person ever since. I really appreciate them, appreciate them as a species and stuff. Well, thank you so much for talking to us about this turtle. I feel like we could probably talk for hours about turtles. Yes. <laughs> but to keep the video reasonable length. Yes. And thank you guys so much for watching this week's episode. Don't forget to leave a little, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below. Subscribe to my channel. And also check out my Instagram, at Koshirk. And as always, I'll see you next week.